Hey, what's going on guys? Hope you are all doing well. It's been a long time in the making to do this video here and I've been uh, promising a couple people I've been doing this, finally getting around to this here because I've got the time very early Sunday morning. Um, but I went to Monster Mania uh, number 39 with a buddy of mine back uh, in March, about a month, uh, a little over a month ago now. So I've been sitting on this for a while before doing this video. But um, I don't really ever travel to conventions that much outside of going to the Star Wars celebrations. Um, this con completely drew me in for a couple of reasons. And I'm going to go through all the loot and the autographs and everything. It's just uh, an unbelievable lineup that they had for this. I'm actually going back out there in August this year for number 40. They do this three times a year. Um, twice in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And then the other one, man, I don't remember where the other one's at. It's a, in a neighboring state there, but... Uh, great con. They uh, they really get amazing guests. It was one of the best lineups I've seen for a horror convention ever, so could not resist going. I'm going to dive right into this here and show these signatures and then show you the loot that I picked up because I probably spent more money at this con than I spent at any other con before. So first one here, and this is what drew me in originally, and there's a little reflection for you, but Tim Curry. So this is what got me basically to go to this con. Um, my girlfriend, Kristen, is a hardcore Rocky Horror fan. As you can see, we got a couple of the other folks here. But she loves Tim Curry. And I've never seen him do a con before. At least, I mean, I don't look at every single con that's going on, so I'm sure he does things every once in a while. But I know it's very rare for him to be out doing a con. Um, he wasn't signing in person, but he was there doing photo ops the whole time. Um, these were all pre-signed, but just to kind of be, you know, with present company to get that signature as opposed to just ordering something off eBay and all that. It felt had a little bit more of a personal touch even though it wasn't, you know, hand a hand signing something right in front of you thing. So that was the first thing. I was just like, all right, Tim Curry's there. I'm like, I'm going out there, I'm gonna get you this autograph. And you know, that was kind of that. Then I start looking through this guest list and I see somebody else pop up on here. And this is where my eyes totally exploded. And that was for Richard Dreyfus. Now that was kind of like a holy grail autograph for me. So I got my Jaws posted here. I got others on here. Susan Backline, Joe Elves, excuse me, Jeffrey Kramer, <laughs> Carl Gottlieb, and uh, now I got Richard Dreyfuss on here. That is a holy grail signature for me. If it were not for Star Wars, Jaws would be the end-all be-all film for me. So Star Wars and then Jaws are, without a doubt, my two favorite films. Um, Star Wars, I guess the whole franchise and stuff, but just absolutely love and adore Jaws. And it was so, so stoking for me to get other autographs on a Jaws poster as it is, but to actually meet Richard Dreyfuss, um, get to shake his hand, got a photo op with him and everything. Just unbelievable, super nice, kind guy. When we did the photo op, I just kind of ran up to him and I was like, hey man, I'm gonna give you a really big hug, just so you know. And he was like, all right, let's do it. You know, so we just kind of opened up and gave him this big hug and they snapped the picture right as we turned. So I was, he was just a really warm guy. Funny story with him too, he, uh, he had this, I think an NYPD hat on and my buddy had a Monster Squad hat on. And so we're standing in line, he comes walking around, shaking his hat and he's just like going once, going twice. And my buddy just like took his hat off, just like, hey, comes over, swaps hats, throws on his Monster Squad hat, wore that hat the remainder of Friday, and I was looking through the photo op pictures he did. Every single photo op he did for Friday, he was wearing that hat in too. So my buddy has his hat still. He actually signed it for him for free. Um, so he's got Richard Dreyfuss's hat that he was wearing leading into the convention, and Dreyfus has his Monster Squad hat, which a lot of other people got photo ops with that hat on. So that was a pretty cool experience. Um, but yeah, just a super, super cool dude. And uh, so, so happy to have met him. And I almost had John Williams on this poster, too. I just went and saw John Williams the other day. And he was uh, conducting the Chicago Symphony Orchestra here. So I brought my Star Wars poster and my Jaws poster down, kind of hoping for a chance to catch him either in front or, you know, in the end of the show. And just no luck. I guess he doesn't do signings anymore. He had some crazy experience with uh, an outlandish fan. And that was it. Just axed that right off, which is a bummer because I was... Again, within about 10 feet of him when he was leaving, but they were just kind of ushering him to the car and just there was no chance to even make eye contact to grab his attention. But maybe one of these days, we'll see. Uh, the other huge, huge draw for me here too, and this, this was one of my favorite movies growing up, and it just has such a nostalgia factor for me that I can watch this movie probably weekly and still just be super entertained by it because this is one of those ones as a kid just watched over and over and over. And it's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. 
and they did a full-blown reunion here with the Killer Clowns crew. And this here, this poster, this is an original one sheet rolled. Um, this is 27 by 41. So when you get a full poster now, they're all 27 by 40 for the reprint. But when these were originally printed, they're 27 by 41. This is back when the movie was originally released. I found a guy online that actually had original roll, uh, rolled posters, which is unbelievable to find something like that, especially for a movie like this that didn't have a huge theatrical run. So there's not a lot of these posters in existence. Um, when I had the uh, Giotto brothers here, there's Edward, Stephen, and uh, Charlie there. These are the three brothers, um, writers, producers, special effects, directed. I mean, it, really, they did everything for this movie. And even when I pulled this thing out, they're like, holy cow, man, Like, we don't even have one of these posters. We didn't even know these were basically in existence. So kind of cool to have this here. Um, I, this might be, for I mean, for all I know, this might be the only piece like this that's in existence, a rolled poster with these signatures on here. So I was super, super happy to have this. They had a lot of people there, too. So, yeah, the Santa Three, Chiodo Brothers there. Um, Grant Kramer, who played Mike, he was the male lead in there. Yeah, Suzanne Snyder, who was Debbie, the female lead. She's also in Night of the Creeps. And then we got Mike Martinez. He was one of the clowns. I'm trying to remember which guy he was offhand here because they were all behind costume. But I think I think he was slim. But then Herod Blank over here, who was listed as playing Rudy, um, marked himself as slim. So I, my other buddy, Jay, who's on YouTube and stuff, we were kind of talking about that a little bit with kind of who was who behind the mask and stuff, but just kind of cool to get two guys that were actually in the clown outfits, um, you know, in this film. If you guys have not seen this, this is probably the best cheesy fun you could ever have watching a movie. It's a absolutely awesome, awesome time. And Arrow just released a Blu-ray for this, which I hopefully will be getting in the mail pretty soon here uh, from Amazon because that dropped the other day and I really, really want to watch this on a Blu-ray. But, yeah, this is, a, this is a hell of a piece that I'm, like, super, super proud to have here for sure. And last but not least for the signature set, I'm just going to kind of roll it open. But, yeah, I got a – this is a reprint poster. I'm Originals for this are astronomical. But got John Carpenter on there. And that was kind of, like, the last straw as to what secured everything to make this trip out there. Like, there was no hesitation um, we had a carpenter signature before, unfortunately it had gotten lost in a flood and we'd lost a couple signatures that by far was the most, um, important and the one that burned the most was losing John Carpenter. So it's nice to get that one back. Um, especially cause who knows how much longer he's going to be doing this stuff. So super happy to, to got that. And then they're doing in August, um, the main reason I'm looking to go back out there is because they're doing a 40th anniversary for Halloween now, so I really want to kind of stack up on that as much as I can. Kind of holding out that maybe they can get Jamie Lee Curtis out there to do one last thing. But um, other than that, though, Carl Weathers is going to be there too. And that's going to kind of get me into the loot here because I want to go meet Carl Weathers now because one of the vendors there couldn't even believe that they had this. But they surely did, and I had to jump on this. Boxing glove here. All right, signed by Sylvester Stallone. Had to hop on this for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, huge Rocky fan, so could not pass this up just by being a Rocky fan. Secondly, they had a lot of autographed pieces, and they had these at really good prices, like much better prices that you're going to get from paying people on eBay and everything. So that kind of secured it in. The other reason is it came with a certificate of authenticity which obviously buying from somebody at an actual collector's table that's gonna make you feel a lot better about making a purchase like this so i hopped on that because of that there and last but not least the convention is in cherry hill new jersey which is right next door um to philadelphia so before we even went to the convention we drove straight through to go out there um, got a nap for like an hour at a rest stop and at like 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning we went over to the art museum did the whole Rocky thing, went to the statue took some pictures, ran the steps and then we went and got Philly cheesesteaks so I was just like hardcore in the mood so it's like there was no way I was going to pass that up and it's normally not something that I just kind of randomly purchased like that especially at a horror convention Like probably the my favorite piece that I got from that entire horror convention 
is that glove and it's not even horror related but super stoked to have it but now that Carl Weathers is going to be there I just got actually in that box right there right there just got uh, a pair of boxing gloves in so I'm going to get Carl Weathers to sign on another glove I got the same uh, pair of gloves that I got the Sloan signature on here and uh, just going to get the Apollo Creed signature and then I can display both those gloves together so that's kind of that's going to be like a holy grail item once that's kind of complete and fully displayed with everything so I'm really stoked about that and then let's see I'm going to get a couple other things here this here um, obviously, I mean, you guys know, <laughs> reanimator, replica syringe here, and this comes from Mark over at Nightmares Unlimited. He also did the Phantasm Sphere that I have. I don't even know if I've ever done a video for this, but just kind of plow into that back there. You can kind of see it just hanging out on the stand back there, but got that there. He does these as well. Had to hop on this. Another thing that I got from him, too, this was post-convention, but it was kind of nice to meet him and talk with him about stuff. Post-convention, though, I hit him up because he showed me these other spheres that he's doing. And look at this bad boy. So, tribute to Angus Scrim. Super, super beautiful piece here. So, I had him do this. He actually uh, handmade this. This is all custom cut into the sphere ball. Um, that silhouette of Angus in there with the blades. And then you've got Angus Scrim. I just, just a beautiful piece. And I mean... As you guys don't know, or if you shouldn't know if you've been watching my channel, but if you've not been watching my channel, Phantasm is my favorite horror franchise, without a doubt. And um, just to have something like this to commemorate Angus Scrim, who, in my opinion, is just one of the nicest people I think this world has ever had to offer. I've had the privilege of meeting that gentleman two times, and I, I just I can't say enough nice things about him. Uh, really a, a man for the fans and a guy that really appreciated everything that he has been a part of and everything that fans have given back is just I can't say enough nice things about that guy and just great piece to have so little side note there but yeah got that from him too after the fact and then got some cool stuff here too they had kind of like these glasses so you can see the tall man that's Angus there for those of you that don't know Phantasm but there's the tall man in there, and you don't see a lot of Phantasm merchandise. You know, that gets, I feel like it's kind of an, a rare thing to come by. So whenever I see anything Phantasm, I pretty much hop on it. And I thought this was super dope because this is actually in with the glass. It's not like an image or a decal or anything like that. So this will not rub or fade or anything. Like This glass can be used, and this image is going to stay preserved, which is awesome. So super happy to have that there. And then the other thing that these people did... On top of doing these glasses, they got coasters, and I've never used a coaster or owned a coaster in my entire life, but I had to get them because, look at this, the little spheres. I saw they had three left, so I just grabbed them all. I was like, oh, I guess I got a, <laughs> I didn't even know that I had this. I guess they got two spheres, and I've got a Bride of Frankenstein. That's super funny. I haven't even opened this since I left the convention, but... <laughs> All right, so I got the two spheres and a Bride of Frankenstein, but nevertheless, I will, uh, I'll make sure to use coasters once we get our new place, or just have them out as, I don't know, like a decorative piece or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's everything on that side, and then I've got a couple of t-shirts too, so I'll bust those out right now. All right, so first, before the shirts here, totally forgot, I grabbed a couple movies too. Uh, first on there, Blood Diner, and uh, I have not seen this movie, it's been recommended multiple times, and I found a copy with the slip. They had a a booth up that was selling all sorts of limited edition releases, which was awesome. So I ended up grabbing this, and I missed out on my chance to grab this, but I grabbed it at the convention, which was uh, Arrow's release of The Hills Have Eyes, the limited edition here. So um, super nice release. I love that they do these with these kind of like uh, like card bo or like board boxes here. It's super, super cool. Um, so yeah, I grabbed a couple movies, and now we'll get to the shirts here, because these shirts are awesome. First is for the little, little one. She is uh, eight months old, so... <laughs> Um, this will be perfect come Halloween time. Sam from Trick or Treat, uh, one of my favorite horror films of recent time here. Definitely, um, in my opinion, a classic that's going to stand the test of time. Next, Monster Squad here, which is super cute. It's a Monster Squad founding member. Uh, love this. Another one of my favorite movies growing up. I would love to see a reunion for this um, because I would jump on that in a heartbeat to get a poster sign. And, as I said, it's hard to find Phantasm stuff. Look at this. A kid's shirt. I think this is like a 2 or 3T or something. Um, but look at this, man. Got the Phantasm Sphere on there. Want to play catch. <laughs> That's like ridiculously awesome. So I could not pass that up. 
And then this one here is for the teenager. She loves Monster Squad as well and uh, also loves Stranger Things. So this was like such a cool hybrid shirt, um, you know, from the Stephen King rules in Monster Squad, but switching this over to Stranger Things. So it kind of keeps that retro 80s feel with everything, but blends together these two awesome properties. So I thought that was a really cool shirt. She uh, loved this and it made me happy because she picked up on it real quick too. <laughs> and some Phantasm love again. Again, it's, and I never see stuff for Phantasm. This convention had a lot of Phantasm stuff, which made me really happy. But I thought this was super cool, man. The tall man, but, you know, I'm in the Batman, <laughs> which is so cool. And you got, like, the sphere blades coming out of the top here. Thought that was awesome. And this next shirt is, like, ridiculously cool. It's like a Holy Grail kind of a shirt, which I thought was awesome. <coughs> and that is... Uh, a phantasm shirt you get but look at this you got the sphere like totally taking out jfk which is you know is it too soon probably not it's a long time ago so i just thought this was a really cool kind of a, a mixed shirt with that i love this that is a super ba shirt right there so um absolutely love everything about this convention this was such a damn good time and just a, like a weekend warrior thing, like drove out there straight through, slept an hour, did the Rocky stuff. Uh, we went out to Kevin Smith's. Oh, yeah, there's one other thing here. Went out to Kevin Smith's um, comic book shop out there, the Secret Stash. Um, where are we at here? Man, I'm forgetting about all sorts of stuff here, guys. But, yeah, we went out there, and he's got his own Funko Pop. Look at that. For the 10th anniversary there, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I still am in the pop game, not quite as much as I was, because I'll show you right here real quick, and then we'll kind of get this wrapped up. But got these here, which are kind of like newer. These are all stacked up. This here are all the Star Wars ones, and this goes four, three or four rows deep on top of this shelf. So I, that's all stacked up, and then these guys here, and that is just for what's in the house. Um, there's probably about three or four times as much from what that is that's boxed up in the garage right now. So I still grab stuff here and there when I can, but I try to uh, I try not to do as much as I was because I was just going crazy with that stuff. But um, I have one more piece. Let me roll this out. One more piece, and we're done. All right, guys. I lied. Got two more here. Totally forgot about the artwork that I had gotten, but this print is killer from Night of the Creeps. And what I love about this here, not only is it cool and simplistic, but when you kill the lights on this, the slug glows in the dark, and then everything that's kind of intertwined in the brain and going down the spine all glows in the dark as well. So it's really cool touch. Can't remember the artist's name offhand right now, but I know he goes through uh, Quilt Face Studios. And this here is another print of his that I got. The predator face glows in the dark. And over here, this Halloween print, there's a silhouette of Michael Myers that glows in the dark in the actual window frame, which is really cool. I've got a They Live print from him too, which is just like, a, it's a larger print, but it's kind of like a piece of money, like a one or five dollar bill kind of thing. Um, and when that glows in the dark, everything goes blank on the bill. And then it just says, this is your God that glows, which is really cool. And last but not least here is a They Live print. And I absolutely love this here because it came with glasses, which is so cool. So you can kind of like put this in a frame, throw the glasses, kind of like hang them on the frame there. When you pop them on, this is 3D and it all pops, which is such an awesome touch to this. Um, for those who know they live, obviously the significance of the glasses with everything, but I thought that was a really cool touch for that print there. And uh, yeah, man, just a great time. That is everything i think i got it all i was like finding stuff as i was going it's been so long should have had this all out and ready to go but um i was finding stuff just laying around I was like oh crap that's right i forgot about the art prints and stuff and uh, the movies and whatnot but anywho thank you all very much for tagging along i know this is probably a pretty long video but i wanted to make sure i kind of got everything into an update i wanted to talk a little bit about the con and there was some troubles and stuff um kane hodder apparently like slashed somebody's arm with a machete on accident and then all these issues with the fire marshal and stuff. So I know they definitely had their troubles. Luckily, it didn't affect us too much. We had Richard Dreyfuss' photo op get delayed by like three or four hours or something, which delayed us from making our trip home because we had gotten everything that we needed. So we're going to get an, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus. We we're going to get an early start to the trip home and everything. But um, nevertheless, though, it was a really good time. Very much looking forward to Monster Mania 40 coming up here in August. 
And um, that's going to do it, guys. Leave me comments down below. Um, let me know, you know, what kinds have you been to? What are some of your favorite pieces or autographs that you have? Um, would love to know whatever you guys got. So uh, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. Again, thank you all so much for watching and all the continued support with everything. Um, definitely more videos on the way. Just trying to find the time to get these bad boys out there. But um, appreciate everything. So thank you guys very much. Hope you have a great day, and I will catch you all next time.